I want to take a few minutes and talk about one of my favorite pivot table features, adding visual filters with slicers and timelines. Now, these sound like very fancy, complex tools, but they're actually quite simple. Slicers are basically just interactive versions of a filter, and timelines are just slicers that work with dates. So it's as simple as that. Inserting these are very simple as well. You can drop them in right from the field list by right-clicking a given field or column and choosing Add as Slicer, or if you're looking at a date-specific field, Add as Timeline. And when you add that slicer in, it will create a new workbook object containing a list of possible user selections, and those selections will dynamically tie back and filter the pivot table itself, just like a regular filter in a drop-down cell. Now, by default, slicers will only interact with the pivot table from which they were created. But that said, if you have multiple pivot tables generated from the same source data, you can use your report connection options from your slicer tools menu to essentially tie a single slicer to multiple pivot tables. And in the demo we're about to dive into, we're going to do just this. We're going to control an athlete pivot and an event pivot using a single set of slicers and timelines. Now remember, each of these pivots needs to share the same source data or be related in some way. You can't just try to control two unrelated tables using a single slicer. Now final note here, by default the selections or the items that you see in a slicer will visually indicate cases where no data is available. So if you had a slicer for season and a slicer for sport and you selected summer as the season, you wouldn't want to show all of the winter sport options in that second slicer because those will generate no values. In most cases, those will be grayed out by default, or in some cases, not even visible in the slicer. And that's certainly a helpful feature, but one thing to keep in mind is that it can slow down performance if you're dealing with very, very large or complex tables with a lot of interactions between many slicers. Now, common use cases here, uh, for one, adding user-friendly visual filters to reports or dashboards that you build with pivot tables and pivot charts. And second, using slicers to clearly and visually indicate exactly how a table is being filtered. So with that, let's jump into Excel and practice filtering down some data using these slicers and timelines. All right, so if you'd like to follow along, go ahead and open up your pro tip workbook and we're gonna to head to the slicers and timelines demo in the gray pivot table tips section. So go ahead and jump right out to that tab, slicers and timelines. And what you'll see here are two pivot tables already in place. The one on the left is called athletes and the one on the right is called events. And in both cases, we're just looking at the count of gold, silver and bronze medals earned either by event or by individual athlete. And we've created a little bit of space above both of these tables so that we can essentially create a control panel with slicers and timelines to dynamically filter the tables below. So it's almost like creating a mini little type of dashboard here. So let's start with our athlete tab, head to our field list. And the first slicer I'd like to insert is a simple one for season, only two options, summer or winter. So I'm gonna right click add as slicer and there we go it's inserted this new worksheet object that can be treated just like any other object you can hold alt snap it to your grid if you'd like you can resize it drag it around just like so and watch what happens as i make different selections to this slicer the pivot table from which it was created filters just like it would had this been a normal filter as opposed to a slicer so when I have summer selected, I see the top medal earners for summer Olympic sports, Michael Phelps and Ryan Lochte, both USA swimmers in this case. Same goes for winter. Now we see only the winter athletes in the pivot. So let's go ahead and unfilter. Let's go back into our first pivot. I want to add a second slicer now for sports. So right click, add a slicer, drag it in place. And one thing to note here is that in this case, I have a very tall and long list kind of packed into a small piece of real estate so what we can do is change the slicer tools to adjust things like the style alignment arrangement and the number of buttons 
So in this case, let's make this different color to kind of differentiate it from our season slicer. Let's drag it out quite a bit here. And instead of one single column of buttons, let's make this something like three columns. That just makes it a bit more readable and it makes the scroll bar a little bit easier to interact with here. Now, check this out. If I select summer from my season slicer and scroll down, at the bottom of my sport slicer, you'll see these grayed out options, alpine skiing, biathlon, bobsleigh. And you'll notice that by no coincidence, those are the winter sports. So Excel is visually identifying the invalid options here because if we were to select ice hockey, for instance, note that there are no rows left in the pivot because no athletes competed in ice hockey during a summer Olympics. So we can go ahead and unfilter that. And one thing that we can do to kind of customize how this works is select the slicer, go into our slicer tools and slicer settings here on the left and see this checkbox. We're visually indicating items with no data. That was the faded style that we just saw. Another option that tends to work really well is hiding items completely that have no data. So if we check that box instead and press OK, now those winter sports don't even appear within this list. Same thing if we click winter, now we see only the winter sports and the summer options don't exist. So this is a nice clean style, nice approach, an option to use. But again, remember that it can slow things down if you're working with very large or complex tables. And one other thing to note here, by default, you've got single select enabled, meaning that as you change your selection, you're only dealing with one particular item or selection at a time. If you check this box with the check marks, that enables multi-select. So I can see athletes who competed in alpine skiing or biathlon or bobsleigh. And that's kind of up to you, depending on the data, whether or not you want to enable this multi-select option. In this case, let's keep it as single select for now. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this. And we're gonna do one more example here from our athlete pivot back to our field list. This time I wanna work with the year field. When I right click, notice that now this last item, add as timeline, is finally active. And it wasn't for our other two cases, season and sport. So if we click add as timeline, this creates another slicer-like object, except with a different kind of look and feel because this is a timeline designed specifically to work with dates. Now, a couple things to call out here. You may see that it's kind of rolling up things in a funny way. We only have data by year, so we, re we really don't care about months here at all. So you can change this little drop down to years, and we can go into timeline tools, which look very similar to slicer tools. And we can do things like adjust the style, maybe want this to be green. And then to interact with this timeline, it's as simple as clicking and dragging. You can extend the handles. You can click to look at only individual years. And you'll note that just like the other versions, the slicers, the pivot table filters dynamically. So essentially what we've done is create a set of visual controls that users can use to explore any different combination of data from this pivot based on the season, the sport, and a specific time frame. We can look at summer athletes, for instance, who competed in archery and only from 2014 through 2016. And instantly, we're able to drill down our pivot table to show that exact combination of rows. Now, the final thing I want to show you is this report connections option. So let's unfilter each of these existing slicers and timelines. And what we're gonna do one by one is select the slicer, head into our slicer tools, and click this report connection option. Now this shows me any valid pivots in the worksheet that I can connect this slicer to. And as you can see, we've got a checkbox next to athletes and a blank checkbox next to events, which is this second pivot right here. All we need to do is check that box, press okay, and now watch what happens. We select summer and both the athletes and the events filter accordingly. Same with winter. And we've basically just tied this one slicer to both of these pivots. We're gonna do the exact same thing for sport, report connections, tie it to events as well.
and the timeline, timeline tools, report connections, events, press OK. And now just like before, we can filter on any combination of values. And now both of these fields, both these pivots will update to reflect those selections. So there you go, slicers and timelines, great way to add visual filters and user-friendly tools to your Excel pivot tables.